A wave of passion preceded the coffin of Grand Revy Menachem Schneerson as it was borne out of the Lubavitcher headquarters. Many tried to touch the coffin, seeking a last blessing from their beloved leader of 43 years. Before succumbing last night, Schneerson had clung to life for three months after a stroke last March left him comatose. To his Lubavitcher followers, he was more than a leader. He was a friend. When he spoke to you, he was to totally, totally focused on you and, and not on anyone else. And you felt that you were the only person existing to him at that time. Schneerson became the Rebbe in 1950, and although he continued to adhere to the customs of dress and ceremony of the old religion, as practiced in Eastern Europe, he led the Lubavitchers to become the most visible and outreaching of the Hasidic communities. On a practical level, he had true vision. He was able to understand not only the Talmudic and Hasidic insight, but also the world. The Rebbe also made them a political force, both in Israel and in this city. Many politicians paid their respects today. While it is a great loss, he has certainly given us uh, hope and inspiration and showed us how people working together can make a difference, can make a change. If some of the Lubavitcher were in tears, others celebrated the Rebbe's death. Many believe Schneerson is the biblical messiah come to earth. There is no other Rebbe. There is only Rebbe. And he will take us to Jerusalem. Our community uh, is somewhat in denial. When you lose someone who you love, I lost, lost my father four years ago, and I know the feelings you go through. You don't want to accept it. You want to say it's not true. Okay, Rabbi Schneerson will be buried at Montefiore Cemetery near his father-in-law, the Rebbe who preceded him. Yet many Lubavitchers still believe he's the Messiah and will return. Channel 2 News is live in Brooklyn. This is J.J. Gonzalez reporting. Back to you, Reggie. Okay, thank you, J.J. Rabbi Schneerson led a life of such piety and charity it convinced many of his followers that he was the Messiah. Channel 2's Jim Jensen takes a look at the life of this extraordinary leader. Many of his followers believed Menachem Schneerson was not just an ordinary man. He was, in fact, the Messiah, who was destined to usher in an era of peace on earth. He was born in Russia, where the Lubavitch movement originated in the 1800s. Schneerson was considered a child prodigy in his knowledge of the Torah, the very definition of Jewish law. He immersed himself in the study of the Torah, which for the Hasidim is life itself. Rabbi Schneerson attended the University of Berlin and later received a doctorate in electrical engineering from the Sorbonne in Paris. But he would ignite more than engineering sparks. He would ignite the sparks that electrified his followers. Schneerson and his wife, the late Rebetzin Chaya Musia, came to Crown Heights, Brooklyn, in 1941. At the time, his father-in-law was the Grand Rebbe. Ten years later, after his father-in-law died, Schneerson would become the Lubavitcher leader. Rabbi Schneerson is credited with taking a tiny, nearly 200-year-old Hasidic sect in Belarus and turning it into a dynamic, devoted movement that now boasts more than 200,000 members worldwide. Through publishing houses and other investments, the Lubavitch wealth has been estimated to be nearly $500 million. There are an estimated 15 to 20,000 Lubavitchers in Crown Heights, home of the Lubavitch headquarters at 770 Eastern Parkway, an exact replica of Schneerson's home down to the very brick was built by Lubavitchers in Israel, waiting for the day he would come to the Holy Land. Around the Brooklyn headquarters, the faithful have their own world, sustained by kosher food stores, synagogues, and even a Messiah store called the International Moshiach Center. Moshiach is the Hebrew word Messiah. Every Sunday morning, you could find huge crowds gathered at the Lubavitch headquarters, waiting their turn to meet the Rebbe face to face to receive his blessing. He would give each individual a crisp new dollar bill to be given to charity. The Jewish tradition of Sudaka. It was only three years ago that Schneerson proclaimed that the Messiah is on the way and hinted he could be the one. So his followers came and they prayed and they danced here in Crown Heights and in Israel where they put out banners proclaiming his arrival. Jim Jensen, Channel 2 News.
The Rebbe and his wife, who died in 1988, never had any children, and Schneerson never gave any indication as to who should succeed him. So tonight, the issue of who will replace him remains unsettled. Another huge gathering. Schneerson inspired intense devotion from his quarter of a million followers around the world. NBC's Gary Matsumoto reports. For some Lubavitchers, it was unthinkable. The man they thought immortal, Rebbe Menachem Schneerson, had died of his stroke in the early hours of Sunday morning. At Lubavitcher headquarters in Brooklyn, New York, some members of the sect danced ecstatically in the belief that Schneerson's death was just another sign the Messiah was about to come. Even before his body was taken from the hospital, a blizzard of fax messages bearing the news flashed around the world. In Israel, home to one of the largest Lubavitch communities, mourners jammed the airport hoping to reach New York in time for the funeral. This Lubavitcher arrived from southern France. I was ready to go. And I thought it was the really one last thing to do for the rebel. I never, I, I never did anything to thank him for the way he has influenced my life. So I think I can show him some respect today. Schneerson was seventh in an unbroken line of spiritual leaders that reaches back 200 years to the town of Lubavitch in what is now Belarusia. He is credited with making the Lubavitcher sect the most influential branch of ultra-Orthodox Judaism in the world. By most estimates, only 300,000 strong. The Lubavitchers are still powerful enough, it is alleged, to influence governments in Israel. Schneerson became so revered that many members regarded him as the Moshiach, or Messiah, a spiritual descendant of King David, who would lead his exiled people back to Israel, ushering in a time of world peace. Mourners here at Lubavitcher headquarters are divided over the meaning of the Rebbe's death. Some say it proves conclusively that he was not the Messiah. Others insist he still is, and say that he will physically rise from the dead. We feel that today this is exactly what's going to happen, and the miracles that are going to be experienced there are going to be wondrous and unbelievable. Schneerson had no children, and hence no successor, hiking anticipation for many of those attending the funeral that the Rebbe will indeed return. Gary Matsumoto, NBC News, Brooklyn. Israeli officials made frequent trips to his headquarters in the Crown Heights section of Brooklyn, where they sought his blessing and implicit electoral backing. The reason was simple. His 40,000 followers here were prone to vote just the way he told them. What I knew was that the Rebbe wanted it, and that the Rebbe is an expert in such things, and that because he wanted it, it was good for the people. This blind faith, blocked voting, gave Schneerson impressive clout in the Israeli Knesset to pursue a conservative sectarian agenda against liberal practices like movies on the Sabbath. Because he controlled a small but strategic number of seats, Schneerson could influence the shape of Israeli coalition governments far out of proportion to the actual voting strength of the religious community. When the left-wing Shimon Peres was close to ousting the right-wing Itzhak Shamir as prime minister in 1990, Schneerson ordered two Knesset members to change their vote and deny Peres a majority. When Israelis took to the streets to protest their government's agreement with the PLO last year, most of those in the crowd were followers of the rabbi and were there on his orders. Other Orthodox leaders criticized Schneerson's overt Zionism and the campaign to make him the Messiah. But among his supporters, there was never a doubt. They even went so far as to build a replica here of his home in Brooklyn, hoping to lure him to the Holy Land. But they did not succeed. Though he clearly loved this country, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson never once set foot in Israel. Dean Reynolds, ABC News, Tel Aviv. And we'll be back in a moment. Great spiritual leader. Menachem Schneerson was 92 years old. It's about the first time they met the Rebbe. Well, I came in and he gave me a bracha and a dollar bill. I a blessing and a dollar bill. And then we left and there was like a lot of people there. Thousands of people. And what did you think of it? And it's very nice, very nice. The Rebbe and his Lubavitcher movement were virtually unknown to many Americans until the Crown Heights riots broke out in 1991. Under his guidance, the Lubavitchers became the most visible of the ultra-religious Hasidic groups. Long Islanders Lubavitcher leader Rabbi Teldin says his death leaves a great hole. He is the, the heartbeat of this community. He is the heartbeat of Lubavitch around the world. He is the heartbeat in the sense that he was the, the driving force that made Lubavitch what it was. He took Lubavitch from a small community after the war and expanded into a community which literally is, uh, has 
has its influence in all corners of the globe. While not all Jews believe Rabbi Schneerson to be the Messiah, they say he was a great man and leader. I think it's universally recognized that uh, he was a leader uh, throughout the Jewish world, that he was a tremendous scholar, that he was a very charismatic figure. And uh, although we weren't as active as others in the Lubavitcher movement itself, we do all feel the loss, yes. It's very sad. It's a very mournful event for the, for the whole Jewish uh, religion. And just to give you an idea of what an impact the Rebbe had, Jews from all over the world traveled to Brooklyn just for this event. Elisa, there were scenes of people crying, but also of people dancing and singing. Why the different emotions at the passing of the Rebbe? Well, of course, many people were sad and, and also in shock, actually, over it. They, they still can't believe this has happened, and yet uh, many people are trying to keep their spirits up by remembering, like that one little boy, uh, when he first first time he met the Rebbe. So it's uh, a whole gamut of emotions Just for this. celebrating his life. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much, Lisa LaRocca. In other news... Boeing gets a new and risky venture off the ground with hopes set Say this. the Israeli success special program. Orthodox Lubavitcher Jews believe that he was the Messiah, and now they're waiting for a miracle. The 92-year-old rabbi died early this morning, and even those who didn't believe Pearson was the Messiah consider him one of the world's most influential Jewish religious leaders. CNN's Gary Tuckman joins us from the cemetery where mourners are paying their respects. Gary? Well, Brian, thousands of people from throughout the world have converged upon this cemetery in Queens, New York. The leader of the Jewish Orthodox Lubavitcher movement, Menachem Schneerson, is being laid to rest at this hour. Schneerson, who died early this morning after suffering a stroke three months ago, was considered the Messiah by many of his followers. And right now, he is inside this family crypt right behind us. There are literally hundreds of people still waiting to get a chance to go inside this crypt. He's being laid to rest next to his father-in-law, who was the last grand rabbi, of the Lubavitcher movement. Now, the service was only expected to last about a half an hour. They're now on two and a half hours because of the outpouring. There are still people who are flying into Kennedy and LaGuardia airports who want to come to this crypt before they close it off, so they plan to continue the service indefinitely right now so anyone who wants to gets a chance to walk by this crypt. Now, Menachem Schneerson was 92 years old when he passed away today, and to many of the people here, he was the most important person in the world. For 44 years, he resided in the world headquarters of the Jewish Orthodox Lubavitcher movement as its leader. When his body was carried out of the Brooklyn, New York building in a simple coffin, Rabbi Menachem Schneerson's admirers pressed forward trying to get close, trying to touch the casket in a sign of affection. The leader of the largest ultra-Orthodox branch of Judaism had died at 92, a man some of his followers believe is the Messiah. Now we are out, uh, we live without uh, leadership. Always we had a leadership that uh, don't tell us what to do and what's going to be. But now uh, we have no leadership. It's a very bad film. Schneerson's body was taken to a cemetery in Queens, New York, where he was buried in a family crypt next to his father-in-law, the grand rabbi before him. Hundreds of the faithful stood on the crypt, many weeping. Many more surrounded it. There are hundreds of thousands of Lubavitcher Jews throughout the world, and thousands of them flew to New York to come to this funeral. For a man, many of his followers can never imagine dying. In Israel, dozens of charter flights were hastily arranged as Lubavitchers flew across the Atlantic to get to the funeral. Many of the devoted say they feel lost. It's uh, painful, and it's the pain of the entire world that was guided and led by him over the over four decades and I feel here expressing that truly the pain not only of the movement of Lubavitch and it, its millions of adherents but the entire world that lost such a great spiritual leader. Before his death Rabbi Schneerson had said the arrival of the Messiah known as Moshiach was imminent. The Moshiach is ready to come now it is over all, all, only from our start to do something additional in the realm of goodness and kindness. His followers all agree that after four and a half decades of Schneerson's leadership, things will never be the same. Schneerson was the seventh generation of his family to be the grand rabbi of the Lubavitcher movement. He and his wife, who died in 1988, had no children, however, so no heir will fill the position. So a decision has to be made on who will succeed Rabbi Schneerson, 
Today, officials with the Lubavitcher movement are telling us no one can replace Schneerson, and important decisions for at least now will be ruled by committee. Brian, back to you. Gary, we've had reports that some of uh, Rabbi Schneerson's followers apparently have been uh, drinking and, and uh, singing and dancing and uh, drinking beer. Is this part of a celebration or, or, uh, or a funeral? Well, a very, 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 and I say very three times because the people here emphasize that, the leaders of the Lubavitcher movement, small minority of Lubavitcher movement people, have been dancing, celebrating the fact that they think that since Mr. Schneerson has passed away, that means he will soon return as the Messiah. Most of the people with the Lubavitcher movement are saying that it's very inappropriate, that God forbids dancing at a funeral event like this, and they are trying to disassociate themselves from this people. But the fact is, Brian, that there were some people dancing today at the headquarters in Brooklyn because they believe the arrival of the Messiah is now imminent. Gary Tuckman, thank you very much for reporting uh, live from New York. Let's go now to Gene. Joining us now to discuss the life of Rabbi Schneerson from New York, Rabbi Herbert Weiner. Rabbi Weiner is an author and rabbi from South Orange, New Jersey. He knew Rabbi Schneerson for over 30 years. Thanks a lot for joining us tonight. First, if you'd explain to us the Lubavitcher movement. Where did it start? What are its beliefs? The Lubavitcher movement is a branch of uh, the Hasidic movement, which started in the 18th century. And uh, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson is the seventh generation descendant of an individual who began this particular branch, which emphasized um, the prominence of mind and thought over emotions. That is, that, that the mind and thought should direct the emotions and the actions. It was a kind of intellectual, mystical movement. Why, why was Rabbi Schneerson viewed by some as the Messiah? In, first of all, we have to understand that uh, what the Messiah, who the Messiah, how, what the Messiah is in Judaism. Uh, a Messiah is a human being, flesh and blood. Uh, he could be called a catalyst who uh, helps to raise the consciousness of, uh, of mankind to a level where there will be no more wars and no more exploitation and uh, where the world will uh, achieve an ecological kind of purity. In other words, it, it, the Messianic dream is a dream shared by all human beings, not just Jews. The Jews have been the progenitors of it, but it's shared by all of us. And the Messiah is a catalyst, an individual who somehow has the power to uh, bring that kind of consciousness about in the world. Now, uh, every Jewish prayer service concludes with a uh, expression of yearning for the coming of the Messiah. It's like looking at a flower which, which is budding, you know, and waiting, waiting for it to flower. And sometimes that waiting for the budding it becomes so intense that you begin to think, oh, there, there, the flower, the flower has come. This has happened more than once in Jewish history. Will you and tell us how a successor will be chosen to Rabbi Schneerson? The uh, Rabbi Schneerson himself was not, he may have been chosen, but they didn't, he didn't come to the throne, so to speak, until more than a year after the previous Rebbe uh, died. It may be that somebody may become manifest as a leader in the course of time. Uh, unfortunately, for the Hasidic movement called Lubavitch, there don't seem to be any candidates, even in terms of male heirs to the succession. Is it so, possible that uh, the movement will die out? It, it is possible that seven generations of a wonderful movement may be the end of the movement, but not the end of the teachings. The teachings are profound, uh, marvelous uh, psychological, religious uh, teachings, which can go on and on. Uh, however, it's also possible that it may go on just as it is now, namely led by an executive board that is carrying on magnificent activities all over the world, taking uh, uh, children out of Chernobyl, and, and uh, conducting uh, school activities in every continent and, and building and uh, uh, arranging for all uh, manner of uh, spiritual growth in all areas of the, of the world, it can go on like this also. It was not that large a movement, I understand. Was its influence felt far beyond its, its numbers? Well, it started off as one of many Hasidic sects, and then... Uh, through the activities of the previous uh, Rebbe, 
And, and uh, the present Rebbe, who just uh, sent it upon high, as we say, the Hasidim do not like the word death, but they think it, it describes a non-existent reality. Uh, so they say he ascended up on high, and, and that's why, incidentally, there's a bit of rejoicing also, in, uh, as, along with mourning, because the soul has ascended on high. But, but uh, in, in answer uh, to, to your uh, question, um, it is possible for the, the movement to continue, as I say, and to uh, simply uh, uh, find a leader in the course of time. And Rabbi Weiner, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Brian? In other news, the Palestine Liberation... ...this morning at the age of 92. A devoted crowd of Smears and followers filled the streets of Crown Heights this afternoon, walking for miles behind the funeral procession of the Grand Rebbe of the Lubavitcher sect. In Israel, hundreds of ultra-Orthodox Jews rushed to the airport to board flights that would bring them to the Rebbe's burial here in New York. To many Lubavitchers, Schneerson was more than a rabbi. He was the Messiah. And so his passing was met with both tears and celebration. Jada Dapper explains. It is Jewish law that the deceased must be buried before the next sundown. And so it was today for Lubavitcher Grand Rebbe Menachem Schneerson. But it was not so easy as hundreds of followers crowded the mausoleum and thousands more climbed fences and barricades to get a look inside the cemetery. Get off from the AL. Please move back. An hour earlier, at least 35,000 Hasidim filled Eastern Parkway as the Rebbe's body was taken from his home. Men dressed in traditional black ran en masse through Crown Heights following the casket. And just then, a rainbow appeared over Brooklyn. A sign, perhaps, for those who believed Schneerson to be the Messiah. Oh, I, I definitely believe he's the Messiah. I don't know how it's going to be the process. You know, there is, uh, the Rambam said that he has to die and then to come to, I don't know exactly how it's going to be, but it's, uh, I still believe very strong. This event will become historic. People will see that this resurrection, as we call it, uh, transformation of this man into becoming the Messiah is a reality. But those who celebrated the Rebbe's death as a sign of the Messiah's coming, those who celebrated in the streets of Brooklyn at 3 o'clock in the morning, they were chastised by others in the sect who felt this was an occasion for mourning, not for dancing. The Rebbe was the foremost Jewish leader of uh, our generation, possibly in the last uh, 500 years. Like losing your father. The lion has fallen. No words to describe that there, a void in the whole world. Eighteen hours after the word first started spreading through this community that their spiritual leader of some 40 years had passed away, there are still hundreds of Hasidim here at the cemetery. Apparently, after 40 years, it is difficult to say goodbye. In Springfield Gardens, Queens, J.D. Dapper, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. As soon as word of the Grand Rebbe's death reached Israel, hundreds of Lubavitchers hurried to make the trip here to New York to pay their respects. Many of the Rebbe's followers boarded chartered planes in Israel. They arrived a short time ago in New York. They did not arrive in time for the funeral, but they will be part of the mourning process over the next week. It's a very difficult situation because everybody's very sad because we just lost someone, apparently, who was very... Uh, dear to us. On the other hand, we should be very happy because uh, we have so many lessons to learn from them. In Israel, some 10,000 Lubavitchers live in the village of Kafar Chabad. Today, some gathered around tables drinking and singing in anticipation of the return of their Messiah. Others were in a state of shock. The community was so intent on Schneerson coming to Israel, they had built a replica of his Brooklyn home, but the rabbi never visited the Holy Land. Rabbi Schneerson was something of a paradox. He dressed in 18th century garb, but addressed his followers by satellite. He rarely left his home, but tried to bring his message to the world. And although his followers numbered in the tens of thousands, Rabbi Schneerson's faith touched millions of lives. <laughs> Rabbi Menachem Schneerson was an enigma, a savior to his followers, a powerful man feared by others. He displayed incredible personal charisma, an uncanny wisdom about empire building and leadership. Schneerson, fluent in ten languages, was born in the Ukraine and educated as an engineer in Paris and Berlin. The Nazi Holocaust galvanized his religious life. After moving to the U.S. in 1941, he joined a group of Holocaust survivors in Brooklyn. 
and over 44 years built a religious and political empire. His high-tech communications network broadcast his message from Brooklyn to the Himalayas, and his publishing house is now the largest distributor of Jewish books in the world. The enterprises are worth an estimated $500 million. But the Rebbe's influence was more than just religious. He became a significant power in Israel. The 40,000 followers there would vote as a powerful bloc, and many Israeli officials visited his Brooklyn home. What I knew was that the Rebbe wanted it, and that the Rebbe is an expert in such things, and that because he wanted it, it was good for the people. But it was his spiritual side that drew people to him. His messages of charity and piety helped transform the ultra-conservative Lubavitchers into a powerful force within the Jewish community. And although Rabbi Schneerson made no divine claim, many called him their Messiah. The Rebbe is the Messiah, is Mashiach. In recent weeks, as the rabbi's condition deteriorated, Lubavitchers kept a constant vigil outside the hospital. They never gave up hope that their leader would miraculously recover. Leaders of diverse faiths remembered Rabbi Schneerson today as a religious scholar and a man of great charity. Rabbi Schneerson was a great leader of the Lubavitcher people, he was a great religious leader of the Jewish people, but he was also a great religious leader of all people all throughout the world. He is a man whose commitment to the Hebrew idea, tikkun olam, which is to cure the world, to make it all better, expressed his commitment to all people everywhere. And he was an instruction to all of us. And from the Reverend Herbert Daughtry of the Association of Brooklyn Clergy for Community Development, maybe in this time of sadness and grief, somewhere there may be the reflections as to what can better bring about harmony and peace. I'm certain that this is what Rabbi Schneerson would want. Although the Lubavitchers make up only a small fraction of Jews globally, the devotion of Schneerson's followers has made the head Rebbe the world's best-known Jewish religious leader. The question now, who will step in to lead the Lubavitchers? Lucy Yang investigates. Many mourners told us they feel like orphans with their charismatic, scholarly, and much adored grand rabbi now gone. There is a void in the Lubavitcher movement which will not be easy to fill. Unfortunately, we have no one. There's no one, as they say, uh, in the dugout that can take the place of this great leader. Um, we were spoiled. Schneerson was so loved by his followers that many believe it'll take an all-out miracle to find his replacement. Schneerson did not have any children to follow him and were told he had not groomed a protege to succeed him. The Lubavitchers have no hard and fast rules on how to choose a leader, so with no obvious choice in sight, rabbis here say there's no need to rush the decision. As far as Lubavitch is concerned, there is so much in the Rebbe's teaching and guidance and leadership that it's enough to ask the Mashiach comes. Speaking of the coming of the Messiah, some Lubavitchers in a highly controversial move today began singing and dancing, convinced that Schneerson is their savior. Our Rebbe is the Messiah, and he's just going to come any minute, and we're just sitting, everyone's sitting around and waiting for it to happen. Many, though, consider such talk sacrilegious. Schneerson himself never claimed to be the Messiah, already a rift in the group. As for what the Grand Rebbe would have wanted for his people, we're told Schneerson did make a will before he died. It is not clear right now what is in that document, but those who do not believe he is the Messiah say they are hoping at the very least it names a successor. In Crown Heights, Lucy Yang, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. The Rebbe's followers now begin the process of sitting Shiva, a period of mourning that will last for the next seven days. Rabbi Menachem Schneerson was 92 years old. All life that um, I think this is a moment of reflection for um, for everyone. In Crown Heights, J.J. Gonzalez, Channel 2 News. I to believe that he was the Messiah who would bring peace to the world. Channel 2's Jim Jensen takes a look back at this extraordinary Jewish leader. Many of his followers believed Menachem Schneerson was not just an ordinary man. He was, in fact, the Messiah, who was destined to usher in an era of peace on earth. He was born in Russia, where the Lubavitch movement originated in the 1800s. Schneerson was considered a child prodigy in his knowledge of the Torah, the very definition of Jewish law. He immersed himself in the study of the Torah, which for the Hasidim is life itself. Rabbi Schneerson attended the University of Berlin, 
and later received a doctorate in electrical engineering from the Sorbonne in Paris. But he would ignite more than engineering sparks. He would ignite the sparks that electrified his followers. Schneerson and his wife, the late Reverend Chaya Musia, came to Crown Heights, Brooklyn in 1941. At the time, his father-in-law was the Grand Rebbe. Ten years later, after his father-in-law died, Schneerson would become the Lubavitcher leader. Rabbi Schneerson is credited with taking a tiny, nearly 200-year-old Hasidic sect in Belarus and turning it into a dynamic, devoted movement that now boasts more than 200,000 members worldwide. Through publishing houses and other investments, the Lubavitch wealth has been estimated to be nearly $500 million. There are an estimated 15 to 20,000 Lubavitchers in Crown Heights home of the Lubavitch headquarters at 770 Eastern Parkway. An exact replica of Schneerson's home down to the very brick was built by Lubavitchers in Israel, waiting for the day he would come to the Holy Land. Around the Brooklyn headquarters, the faithful have their own world, sustained by kosher food stores, synagogues, and even a Messiah store called the International Moshiach Center. Moshiach is the Hebrew word Messiah. Every Sunday morning, you could find huge crowds gathered at the Lubavitch headquarters, waiting their turn to meet the Rebbe face to face to receive his blessing. He would give each individual a crisp new dollar bill to be given to charity. The Jewish tradition of Sudaka. It was only three years ago that Schneerson proclaimed that the Messiah is on the way and hinted he could be the one. So his followers came, and they prayed, and they danced here in Crown Heights and in Israel, where they put out banners proclaiming his arrival. Jim Jensen, Channel 2 News. The Rebbe and his wife, who died in 1988, never had any children, and Schneerson never indicated who he wanted to succeed him. So the future of the Lubavitcher movement could be in doubt, but many followers say it's still too early to be talking about it. In other news tonight, police... ...by the gate, Lubavitcher leader Rabbi Menachem Schneerson was laid to rest in a clean cemetery. Good evening from Crown Heights to Europe to Israel. This is a time of reflection and mourning for Lubavitcher Jews. Yes, the spiritual leader of a quarter of a million members of the worldwide Hasidic sect died today at the age of 92. And tonight the faithful continue to gather outside the Lubavitcher headquarters in Brooklyn to pay their respects. Dave Browdy joins us now live from Crown Heights. Dave. Well, Ralph, ordinarily at this hour, this, the Lubavitcher Chief uh, Headquarters Synagogue would be virtually empty. But tonight, it's quite different. You can see it's quite crowded. And in fact, at this hour, the Chief Sephardic Rabbi of Israel, who has just flown in on that chartered flight that was delayed many hours trying to get to the funeral, is now downstairs praying for Menachem Stairson. It is the part of a formal uh, morning service a service that uh, began tonight, and it is a formal mourning period that will last a full 12 months. The formal mourning process began with sitting Shiva. That's what these men in the basement synagogue at Lubavitch World Headquarters are doing, many of them in tears. Among the Lubavitchers, it's customary to tear a piece of clothing to show that someone in your family has died. Many here, not just those in Schneerson's immediate family, did so. I did it because it makes it gives me a more feeling. It's basically, usually the family tears the garments, and I feel like part of the family. Many of Stearson's followers believe that he was the Messiah. There are still banners saying that here. And many of those who flew in for the funeral bore his picture on small cards. But rabbis here tonight are saying that it seems Schneerson, in fact, is not the Messiah. The Rebbe being Mashiach is a personal belief of individual Hasidim. It has never been a ideological position of the Babich movement, mm -hmm. which the Rebbe is the only one who made that, uh, would have made that position, which he never did. At this hour, they continue to pray for Menachem Schneerson, sitting Shiva in the synagogue down there. Um, many of the faithful wearing yarmulkes, as they do, someone just handed me one. This service uh, will continue into the early morning hours, and the formal morning process will go through a year after which it is possible that the Lubavitchers will name a successor to Menachem Schneerson. Reporting live from Crown Heights, I'm Dave Browdy, News 4. Now back to you in the studio. All 
All right, Dave, and while we are in Crown Heights, the Ascetic community's grief over the passing of Rabbi Schneerson was centered on the headquarters there at 770 Eastern Parkway. News 4's Ari Azza was there as mourners arrived by the thousands. It was an inconceivable moment for many of the true believers. Lubavitcher leader Menachem Schneerson, dead, carried out in a casket, followed by mobs of anguished supporters who, even in their grief, believe Schneerson is still the Messiah, the Moshiach. We're supposed to proclaim, long live the king, Moshiach forever, and then Moshiach will be revealed. And we feel that today this is exactly what's going to happen, and the miracles that are going to be experienced there are going to be wondrous and unbelievable. And you're not expecting a funeral to happen then? I'm not expecting the actual funeral to happen, no. I mean, there might be a procession, but I don't think that it's actually going to be completed, personally. Why? For What's going to happen instead? I think that the Rebbe is going to get up, and we're going to see the revelation of Mashiach. Not all of Menachem Schneerson's followers could hide their emotions. As people left the building where Schneerson's body lay, many cried. A Lubavitcher rabbi explains the emotions of Schneerson's followers. It's not something that, that words can in any way describe. The Rebbe for us, it's our entire life, more than a father, more, more than a teacher, more than a rabbi. And w w without a doubt, at this point, we're orphaned in, in, in the truest sense of the word. The Rebbe has taught us that a Jew should never give up hope and, never, and always believe that tomorrow will be better. That is what's holding us today. With his charismatic personality, Schneerson turned the once obscure Lubavitcher sect into a worldwide movement. Many of his followers arrived here today from as far away as Israel, Europe, and from around the United States. Schneerson never proclaimed himself the Messiah, but also never discouraged his followers from believing he was. The vast majority of Jews worldwide reject the Lubavitch belief in Schneerson as Messiah, but his followers are praying for the Rebbe's return and pledging to keep the Lubavitch movement and the Rebbe's teachings alive. In Crown Heights, Brooklyn, our Rianzer, News 4, New York. Overcome by grief and passionate in their wish to bid farewell to their Rebbe, Lubavitchers jammed the old Montefiore Cemetery in Queens, where Rabbi Schneerson was laid to rest. They came by the thousands and from all over they the world it, to say goodbye. The Rebbe was buried in the crypt that holds his late wife and other members of his family. More now from News 4's Chuck Gomez. Okay, we're apparently having some problems once with that piece. We'll move along now. Once news spread about Rabbi Schneerson's death, airports in Europe, the Mideast, and Australia were packed with Lubavitchers trying to make their way to get to America. Dave Browdy reports on the international coming together in Crown Heights. With word of the death, Lubavitcher Jews started heading for airports worldwide. With the time difference, they just might be able to get to New York from Europe or the Middle East in time for the funeral. In Tel Aviv, they chartered a 747 to fly to Kennedy Airport. We still hope and we certainly hope that the Messiah should come even today and very soon and should take us out from all the sufferings. Here at Kennedy, some arrived with a few hours to spare. We need to give him this respect to come for his funeral. So when you heard this morning in Paris, you had to come? Yes, right away. As they raced through terminals looking to find transportation to Brooklyn, some said they are not sad. They still expect Snareson to show himself to be the Messiah. Others said their faith is unshaken, but they couldn't say where the sect will go from here. This has been a very, very strong, very, very heavy blow to the movement and to the world, but that doesn't mean that anything comes to an end, anything comes to a stop. On the contrary, now we have to try our best to do even more, with more strength, and be able to, uh, to fulfill all the, the Rebbe's wishes. I hope they will find a way to communicate, to, uh, to meet themselves, and to fulfill the visions of the late Rebbe. Many of the followers actually got here after the funeral was over, but they said they didn't care. They felt they had to be here to help mourn the death of their leader. At Kennedy Airport, I'm Dave Browdy, News 4, New York.
And as they came from all over the world to say goodbye, the Rebbe was buried in the crypt that holds his late wife and other members of his family, as he told you. More from News 4's Chuck Goldman. They waited, they wept, they prayed. Their leader was gone, but hardly forgotten. As crowds gathered at Queen's Montefiore Cemetery, some Lubavitcher followers could not contain their grief. They scaled the walls of the mausoleum where Schneerson and his father-in-law, who Schneerson succeeded as Rebbe, will lie. Everybody must move away from the mausoleum. Everyone must get away from the mausoleum. Everybody wants to see their father being buried in uh, probably capacity of 50 people, and there were thousands and thousands, and everybody was climbing the walls to try to get inside and see what it was all about. Finally, supporters followed police orders to leave the crypt as the funeral procession came into view. Well, the river was a source of great strength to uh, hundreds of thousands of people. And uh, he is a link with, the, uh, with our past generations. And it's very important that the young people understand that this is a uh, continuity. Rebbe Menachem Schneerson was a Jewish leader known the world over. But he told followers that he preferred to think of himself as less a leader and more a servant of his people. On this day, his followers mourned both the leader and the servant, even as they wondered who his successor might be. At Montefiore Cemetery, I'm Chuck Gomez, News 4, New York. What impact will the death of Rabbi Menachem Pearson have on the Lubavitch sect? Coming up in just a few moments, we'll talk with an educator who has written extensively about the Lubavitch community. He was among the thousands at today's funeral. And yes, there is much more ahead as we continue for you on this late news night. Haiti declares... A about the Rebbe's impact and the effect of his loss is Professor Samuel Kalman of City University, who's written extensively about the Lubavitch community. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. All day we've been watching the Lubavitch community in mourning. The grief is obviously so overwhelming that one wants to know a little bit more about the relationship of the rabbi to the community. Well, I think as one of the people said in an earlier clip, uh, the rabbi is uh, more than a father. He is a kind of uh, super father, somebody for whom... Uh, they have enormous respect and to whom they turn for the most fundamental questions of their lives, who to marry, how to live, uh, uh, what the future will bring, and what God promises. But, you know, Professor, just one thought here. Uh, he led a very, Rabbi Schneerson uh, led a very vigorous life, but he was 92. It seems surprising, I guess, to most people that the sect, the group, was not preparing for a successor. Well, that's, I think, they're both their great strength and their great weakness. The strength is that it demonstrates the depth of their faith in this man, but it's a weakness as well. I mean, not only did they not uh, prepare for a successor, I think if anyone looked at the way the funeral was today, they didn't prepare for the funeral very well either. We're taking a look now at some video of Rabbi Schneerson. Can you tell us, Professor, what you think will be next for this community? Will there be another Rebbe, or well, how will There's no they go? question in my mind that there will be another Rebbe. The question is whether there will only be one Rebbe or whether there will be several Rebbe's, depending on how long it takes them to, in a sense, get their act together. It could be that we'll find a Rebbe in Israel and a Rebbe in Australia and a Rebbe in Europe and a Rebbe here. Uh, for their sake, I hope that doesn't happen. They do need a strong center, and it has to be somebody with an enormous amount of charisma to be able to hold this worldwide movement together. We're going to take a look at some of the uh, mourners today, uh, an indication of uh, just how deeply uh, felt this event has been. Uh, one of the things I have to ask you, though, is that uh, it's obvious that m many people in the Jewish community don't take that kindly to the Lubavitch. Why is that? Well, I think part of it is that uh, the, uh, the emphasis on the immediate messiness that they began to promote in the last number of years really expecting rose. That he might be the Messiah. Not only expecting, but uh, in, in spite of the fact that a lot of people now are saying they didn't really mean him, they did mean him, and they proclaimed it, and they proclaimed it on billboards and on signs and on posters and on television and everywhere else. And for many Jews, uh, this kind of emphasis on the Messiah has been troublesome. It's been troublesome throughout Jewish history. The Jewish people are very good at waiting for the Messiah. They're not very good at uh, greeting one when he appears. There was also a, uh, there was also something of a dispute, was there not, because the Lubavitches are opposed to allowing uh, citizenship in Israel for Christians to convert, is that right? No, I don't think that they have a, uh, I'm not certain what their particular stance on that is, but uh, I don't think that plays a large part in their ideology. They certainly influence political they events. They influence political in events Israel, a don't. great deal because part of what they were concerned about is that if the Messiah is imminent, then they don't really want to give away 
the land over which he will rule, and that includes all of the territory of the Holy Land. Can you tell us a little bit, Professor, getting back to the issue of who would be next as a Rebbe, how the selection process actually takes place? Is anybody under consideration currently? Well, I imagine there are people under consideration, but uh, without really getting into the details of how the selection process occurs, what we can say is what the, what the Rebbe will be like. The Rebbe will be a person who, like his predecessor, can make claims to be in touch with his predecessor. He'll go to the gravesite, he'll bring messages from this Rebbe, and he will finally be able to give blessings to the people who are following him. Uh, and in fact, in time, it will be the people, the Chabad followers, the Lubavitchers, who will determine if this man is a Rebbe or not. Uh, not any committee. Uh, just as in, uh, in, the, in the 50s, uh, when this man became the Rebbe, it wasn't immediately apparent that he would be the charismatic leader that he it turned out to be. President Heimel, thank you very much for joining us thank this you. evening. We appreciate you staying up with us. And Professor Heilman from City University. And up next, as...